Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice, where we do the songs that you recommend the most. Shout out to our subscriber, Nasty85SS, whose comment received over 5,000 upvotes. This is what he wrote. If it's emotion and Metallica you want, look no further than Fade to Black. Gives a guy the old chicken skin every time he hears it. <laughs> I love that you called it chicken skin and you received so many upvotes, so we have to do Fade to Black. Let's get to it. I think it's fascinating that in this first minute of the song, I can imagine playing it on the piano. There's something classical about the composition. Um, there's It's partly in, in the figure that is first started. Oh, there's a specific kind of bass line that happens at piano. It begins with an A. I'm blanking on the word right now. Um, but there's a specific kind of pattern that can happen in the left hand at times. And then the melody that is composed over that, at first it it just had such a beautiful line. And then the way that it quickly went up and had some some faster technical elements to it, it felt like it could be just a beautiful classical piano song. I'm going to go back to the beginning. If you're a pianist, just imagine how this would feel in your hands. Gorgeous melody. <laughs> Even that little trill there, it feels like it could be very, very classical in nature. Right? <laughs> It's pretty. <laughs> There is nothing more for me. I need 
I appreciated that shift in mood. Sometimes when I've listened to Metallica, it feels almost like they're more aiming to write a music video score than necessarily compose a song for the radio. And I think that's part of why they're so successful. I like the different chapters that are really clear and the shifts are nice. Also so cool that he's got these two instruments that he's switching between. Now, with James Hetfield's voice, I've only heard Metallica a few times, right? Just on this channel. And I'm really letting all of you guide my experience in Metallica. I was surprised. Here he's older and it sounds like he's developed some more um, available placements, essentially. When he first started in, it had a little bit rounder of a sound and then he pushed it back into an aggressive spot at one point. I'll go back and point out exactly where that's happening. It's it's a it's a really interesting vocal development. What a beautiful stage setting. If he just sang like this, I would almost think he was had a smooth country style of singing. He's got some twang in his voice, but it has a little more a little more backspace in the sound, a little more openness here, a little more openness in here too. But then right after this, Getting lost within myself. so right there, I got a little more closed feeling in here, a little more direction of the sound coming right here. I got some distortion on it as well. He very quickly moved back and forth between those two placements. Let's go back again. I loved that quick run on no one else. He gives just a little extra note in there that has, it's a very tasteful ornamentation essentially. Yeah, nothing matters, no one else. I have lost the will to live. Simply nothing more to give. to go back a little bit here. I love the camera angles that have been set up by this filming crew. Shout out to them. Often filming crews don't get enough credit for how brilliantly they're able to capture a perspective. It was so fun to see that perspective of Lars, especially at the drums. <laughs> I like, it almost felt like they were shaking because of how the camera was set between symbols. Loved that. Um, loved seeing that detail of James's switch as well. And ah, the moving cameras as well it gives you the feeling of the massiveness that is on stage at this point. I feel like it's in a pretty massive auditorium or stadium and they've managed to capture both an intimacy in here and a grandness. It's pretty spectacular. <laughs> uh, let's see, back to here. Ah, uh, yeah, I want to get that, that drum cam again. That's such a good angle. Hmm. 
I think we can see it, uh, his mouth shaping and how he's achieving some of these, um, the shift in sounds here. I want to go back and see if I can point it out for you. A little bit dark there. Missing one inside of me. Death and loss, this can't be real. I cannot stand this hell I feel. Painting this is feeling me. So a couple of things that you can see a little bit of, I think if we were to really zoom in on his mouth, um, you'd see it a little bit more, but it's nice. We got a, we got some nice camera angle here so we can see it a little bit. Um, the When he's adding more distortion or grit or press in his sound, just mouth shape wise, one of the things that he does is he shows more teeth. Uh, the Just doing that can pull this back, right? Helps get the sound a little bit more forward overall. Um, when he's in an area that is a little more has more depth and warmth in the sound, a little less teeth. I'm guessing that he has some more inner space partly as a result. If you have a little more inner lift instead of outer smile, have an inner smile, that can help bring a little more warmth into the sound and also a certain sparkliness as well. Uh, go back just a little bit more. Missing one inside of me. Death and lost, this can't be real. I cannot stand this hell I feel. And I want to go back one more time on that phrase and talk about another thing that James Hetfield is doing very, very well here. He is singing all the way through the last note of each phrase. He delivers that energy until the very end and even a little bit after the end of each word. A lot of people will check out when they're getting towards the end of the phrase. They're already thinking about the next thing they're gonna do. Their mind has said, I'm done. But he's just not doing that whatsoever. He's deliberately carrying that intensity through the last words. This is a very important thing for many, many singers that they don't pay enough attention to. That was a cool solo. Missing one inside of me. Death and lost, this can't be real. I cannot stand this hell I feel. I love the emotion in it too. This is feeling me to the point of agony. Cool darkness taking on. Yeah, yeah, I was me. That band break, that instrumental break, felt like it was a response to the lyrics. Uh, now he's gone. Um, it's almost, it's like the person is being taken down further into this emptiness. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, a really good composition. Again, almost uh, like it's reactive to a story. 
storyline rather than just something that was meant for the radio. Oh, so bad. the chapters the way this is evolving is it's fascinating it's almost like movements of a classical piece if i were to do a concerto and have you know different movements essentially signaled often by different tempo markings i would think that i just moved into the next section it's amazing how much classical music and metal music have in common and it delights me <laughs> <laughs> Back to that, that section. So a few interesting vocal things in there. I think overall his sound is just a little more open than I've heard him sing before. Um, and on Goodbye, instead of <laughs> on the diphthong, instead of going to the E part of the I at the end, he's actually modifying that to be a more open vowel. So by, by uh, going to essentially an E vowel instead of an E vowel. A diphthong is when you combine two vowel sounds into one sound. So I, like just say, if I say I, the word I, it's a combination of A and E, I. And instead of having A and E here, he's having A and S, essentially. I, <laughs> it's a very, very deliberate and easy to hear vowel modification. Canadian? <laughs> Cool. And then I also want to shout out about these lyrics. These lyrics are weighty and beautifully written. There's drive and determination at times, but also a certain uh, sense of giving up, of reluctance, of not sure if a person wants to go on. I feel that the way the band, um, the instruments essentially respond to lyrics helps uh, create that sense of ebb and flow as well. Very, very important. And additionally, I wonder how this has emotionally evolved, especially for James Hetfield over the years, because I understand um, there was extreme frustration at a lot of their gear being stolen at one point, particularly an amp that he loved, and um, a decision of whether or not to go on there. And I think in many times in life, there can be decisions whether or not to go on in various ways. But in particular, I understand that there was an accident at one point with him during the song on stage where he got burned, severely burned, second and third degree burns while performing it from some pyrotechnics and some things just went wrong. I can't imagine that kind of physical trauma during a song and coming back to perform that on stage again. 
it would have so much emotion packed into it, and not just emotion that is stemming from heart mind essentially, but also emotion that's stored in the body, in those nerves that have been burned. So I keep thinking about what does he feel like when he's singing this song? It must be intense, and I hear a lot of emotional intensity in his voice. Let's go back a little bit. Go back one more time that goodbye uh, that vowel modification is so clear he also did a little cry into that breakup it's almost middle eastern in the way he did that This uh, Kirk, I think, is the lead guitar player here. He's totally slaying it. This is amazing. <laughs> I love the way he's really driving through phrases, cresting through them, and linking them to the next ones. The technicality and the speed that he's able to go through some of these lines with is incredible, and I like that he alters that with legato notes as well, or long, sustained notes. <laughs> Wow. Oh. Whoa, whoa, the bend. The build up on that, the intensity of that, and the way that they slowed it down, it, they sped it up, it, it just, it really made my blood pump faster. It made me feel warmer. <laughs> it's, it's incredible how they're able to weave so many emotions into this. And I can't help but think about that goodbye, eh? <laughs> goodbye that he's saying and the overwhelming emotions that essentially felt like maybe they couldn't even be sung anymore. They just had to be expressed by the band members. Wow. <laughs> what an intense build. Oh. 
<laughs> well, cool. <laughs> I love that they brought back that motif at the end. The same O that he sang, it came into this ending instrumental section and they looked like they were having so much fun wrapping it up too. We heard that in other areas of the song. Overall, the journey and the way that the instrumental sections would often elaborate emotionally on words that had just been sung. That was extremely fulfilling to me to listen to. And this was totally different from any other Metallica song I've heard before. I feel like this is gonna become a trend. If you wanna hear some of the other analysis I've done on Metallica, you can check out this playlist over here, but please continue making recommendations down below. You are guiding my Metallica journey, so it is in your hands and I look forward to what you're going to recommend next. Thank you.